Hello, and welcome everyone to my deck tech for Turgrid. Uh, she is the new god from Kaldheim. But before we get into this deck tech, I just wanted to remind everyone to please like, comment, and subscribe on the video. Uh, also, you could go and follow me on twitch.tv slash Jarvis underscore Moonbeam. Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter and Instagram at twitch uh, Jarvis underscore Moonbeam. And if you want to go and join my Discord, the link for it will be in the description of the video, as well as the deck list for this. So getting into the deck, starting off, we have our commander. Commander is Turgrid, God of Fright. In case you haven't looked at her, she's a 4-5 God that costs 3 and 2 black. Uh, has Menace, and whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent or discards a permanent card, you may put that card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. She also has a backside to her, because she, with being a god, all the gods in Kaldheim are MDFCs. Her backside is Turgrid's Lantern for 3 and a black. You tap it, and target player loses 3 life unless they sacrifice a non-land permanent or discard a card. And for 3 and a black, you can untap the lantern. So, these both go on hail to two other cards in the history of magic. For the front side, Turgrid, it calls back to It That Betrays. That whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent, you put that card onto the battlefield underneath your control. And for the back side, the lantern, Torment of Hellfire, that you repeat the following process X times. Each opponent loses three life unless that player sacrifices a non-land permanent or discards a card. Because of the, both of these going and really uh, mirroring what Trigger the, herself does, both of these are going to be in the deck. Now... How we're building this deck. The first thing that we're doing with this deck is we're building it with a discard strategy in mind. So with discarding, we start with creatures. You have stuff like Burglar Rat, that when it enters, each opponent discards a card. Calgo Skin Witch, where you can kick it, and if you kick it, each opponent discards two cards. Elvish Doomsayer, when it dies, and each opponent discards a card. Miasmic Mummy, same thing as Burglar Rat, when it enters the battlefield, each player discards a card. Cackling Fiend, when it enters the battlefield, each of your opponents chooses and discards a card. Enemy of Enlightenment. It gets minus one, minus one for each card in your opponent's hands, which shouldn't be a problem because at the beginning of your upkeep, each player discards a card. Herald of Anguish. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent discards a card. So with that in Enemy of Enlightenment, you're having your opponents discard two cards, where yes, you still have to discard one. Vicious Rumors. Uh, it deals one damage to each opponent. Each opponent discards a card, then puts the top card of their library into their graveyard, and you gain one life. Dark Deal. Each player discards all the cards in his or her hand, and then draws that many cards minus one. So it's a wheel. Delirium Skeins. Each player discards three cards. Bad Deal. You draw two cards, and each opponent discards two cards. Each player loses two life. Anvil Bogarden. For two mana, each player skips her, his or her discard phase. And then during each player's draw phase, that player draws an additional card, then chooses and discards a card. Necrogen Mist. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player discards a card from his or her hand. Oppression. Whenever a player successfully casts a spell, that player chooses and discards a card. Court of Ambition. When it enters, you become the monarch, and at the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses 3 life unless they discard a card. If you're the monarch, each opponent loses 6 life unless they discard it. Two cards. Painful Quandary. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, that player loses five life unless he or she discards a card. Gibbering Descent. If you have each player's upkeep, that player loses one life and discards a card. And if you're held that, you skip your upkeep step. So it's a great way to go and get past that whole discarding thing. Uh, Liliana Waker of the Dead. Her plus one is each player discards a card, and each opponent who can't loses three life. And it also has a removal ability in the minus uh, three, where it gets target creature gets minus x minus x until end of turn, getting around those indestructible. Now you're gonna ask, what are some of those payoffs for discarding, other than the fact that your opponents have no hand? Step one, you have Megram. Whenever an opponent discards a card, it deals two damage to that player. Waste not. Whenever an opponent discards a card, you get a 2-2 black a creature card, you get a 2-2 black zombie creature token. 
whenever they discard a land, you get two black mana. And whenever they discard a non-creature, non-land card, you get to draw a card. Liliana's Caress. Whenever an opponent discards a card, that player loses two life. Now, here's something for you. It's not necessarily payoff, but Library of Lane. You skip the discard phase of your turn, but if a spell or effect forces you to discard, you may put the card to the top of your library than the graveyard. So, it goes and protects you against discarding. The next way that we're going to go and attack the deck is we're going to have a sacrifice theme as well. So, starting again with creatures, you have stuff like Bearer of Silence. When you cast it, you pay one and a colorless. If you do, target opponent sacrifices a creature. And it has flying. Archfiend of Depravity, and the beauty of each opponent's end step, that player chooses up to two creatures here she controls, then sacrifices the rest. Butcher of Malak here. Whenever it or another creature you control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature. Liliana Dreadhorde General. Uh, it's minus four ability as each player sacrifices two creatures. And then you also do get the card draw that whenever a creature you control dies, you draw a card. Mire and Misery. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or enchantment. Soul Shatter. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker with the highest CMC among creatures and planeswalkers they control. Tribute to Hunger. Target opponent sacrifices a creature and you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. Bonus Hunger. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. And if you have the city's blessing, instead each opponent sacrifices half the creatures he or she controls rounded up. Sazat's Will. Uh, each opponent sacrifices a creature they control with the greatest power. Then if you go and also control your commander, you can also cast the second side of it and it exile all cards from all opponents' graveyards. Then you create X01 black dual creature tokens, where X is the greatest power among creature cards exiled this way. Going back to the name uh, of the deck and the uh, god, we're going to play her spell, which is Triggered Shadow, where each player sacrifices two creature creatures and has foretell for two and two black. The best card to ever pair with all is oh uh, with it that betrays is all is dust that each player sacrifices all colored permanents he or she controls. Uh, Dictate of Erebos. Whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature. And then you have these cards that do both. Liliana's Triumph. Each opponent sacrifices a creature, and if you control Liliana Planeswalkers, which we have two of in our deck, each opponent also discards a card. Death Cloud, each player loses X life, discards X cards, sacrifices X creatures, then sacrifices, sacrifices X uh, lands. So sure, you're hitting yourself here, but you're going to get a lot more in return. Brain Omnipotence, each player loses half their life and discards half the cards in their hand, then sacrifices half the creatures they control, round up each time. Capital Punishment, it's one of the voting cards that each player votes for death or taxes. Uh, each opponent sacrifices a creature for each death vote, and discards a card for each taxes vote. The Otis Reborn is a saga that step 1, each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker. Step 2, each opponent discards a card. And step 3, you could put a target creature or planeswalker card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Now, we went through all these sacrifices and discards, but what do you do if there's stuff on the battlefield that you can't get rid of, or you need to get rid of in another way? Uh, you have your removal, which feed the swarm. It destroys target creature or enchantment opponent controls. So your enchantment removal from mono black. Toxic Deluge, one of the classic board wipes. Damnation, yet again another classic board wipe. And Soul Guide Lantern to go and remove your opponent's graveyards. Then with it being mono black, you are going to run a lot of tutors. Demonic Tutor, search your library for a card. Diabolical Intent, sacrifice a, sacrifice a creature, and search your library for a card. Diabolic Tutor, just a more expensive demonic tuner, tutor. Vampiric Tutor, search your library for a card and put it on top of it. And Wish Cloud Talisman, remove a wish counter from Wish Cloud Talisman, and then you can give it to someone else. And then we're running all these tutors, so we don't want that your opponents to really tutor, especially if you give them a Wish Cloud Talisman. So you're going to run an Opposition Agent. So that way you get whatever your opponent's tutor for to maybe go and slow down your discard and sacrifice strategy. Then we have our mana base. So you play Dark Ritual, Mana Crypt, Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, 
Charcoal Diamond, Sky Clay Brilla. All great mana rocks, and that one ritual effect. Then you have your lands. Uh, Ancient Tomb, Bajuk Bog, another way to remove a graveyard. Cabal Coffers, Cabal Stronghold, Castle Lock Flame, Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx, Reliquary Tower, and I put this in all my decks, even though not all my decks need it, simply because I do play in a meta where a lot of people go and uh, have their opponents draw cards, and I really hate this card anymore. Uh, Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth to make everything a swamp. And then in the end, we're going to run 27 swamps. It's a total of 35 lands. Now, say you're not winning off of sacrificing, having your opponent sacrifice, or having your opponent's discard. What's one Hail Mary that you could go and throw to win? That Hail Mary is going and creating infinite mana with Basalt Monolith and Rings of Brayheart. Then with the infinite mana, you go and activate Voltaic Key, and you copy Rings of Bright, uh, the trigger of Voltaic Key to untap target artifact with Rings of Bright Heart, and you unt and then you use that to untap Trigger's Lantern, and then you tap Trigger's Lantern, and you just keep going and repeating that, because then you don't have to worry about having black mana to do so, and it's actually less mana intensive in the long run than trying to go and create infinite black mana to go and do that. So that's just like I can't win. Let's play this four card combo to try to win in another way. Now, what do you guys think of the deck? Do you think there's a better way to win? Are there some cards that you just think are awful, or is this some kinds of tech that you like in here that you didn't think of before? Let me know, but I really enjoyed brewing this deck. Have a good one.